the actual definition of stoicism, like the, the philosophical definition, is like, it doesn't even, it's, it's the rejection of pleasure. It's not like the, reje it's the rejection of pleasure as a measure of value. All the other things that people might assume has value um, is kind of up in the air. Um, like, uh, you know, having kids and, you know, things like that, you know, doing right by others. These are all things that are like, you know, he, neither here nor there. But to whatever values you have in life, as long as they're not influenced by your own personal pleasure, then that's stoicism. I think that's a very basic form of it. And I think there's more to it. And it ends up leading into more of a pathway of like a, a encouraged and discouraged behaviors rather than a way of thinking. But I don't care about like the actual definition definition. My own definition is, is the, I'll explain it. I'll explain it with a story. Um, I remember when COVID first popped off, I was on Discord with this dude and he was telling me about how both of his parents got sick. Um, not with, with, uh, COVID, but, um, like some other stuff. I think one of them had like, was like early symptoms of Alzheimer's or whatever, you know? So he actually went back to live with them for a while in case they needed anything. Um, or he didn't like go back to live with them. He would kind of like visit like basically every day. So he would, he was basically living there. Um, but he would like have an office where his apartment was basically. And, um, there was this other person who there, I think it was their grandma or whatever was going through like chemo or something. Um, or maybe it was their grandpa. No, I think it was their grandma. But uh, he went back to live. And this is like, I'm not going to say who these people are. Um, but like his, his grandma was at like high risk because of COVID. And let's call the first person person one and the second person person two. Their situations are very, very similar. In fact, person one has a worse situation. Um, and he the thing is, he wasn't outspoken about it right both of his parents were like in like dire situ in a dire situation seemingly at least you know but he didn't he the only reason why he tells me is because everyone tells me stuff so i'm i'm a good listener and he was strong enough to also not like go fishing for sympathy from everyone else um but like Although it's, although it's good to rely on yourself for, to be the strongest person in the room in desperate situations, getting a little help from, from someone else who won't judge or whatever can, can be a great help, you know? And people know that I'm, I'm always there and I don't judge. Um, I mean, I do judge, but, um, I don't hate, you know, from my judgments, I just point things out, but yeah, I'm not a hateful person. That's what it is, but I'll judge. I'll judge exactly like everything down to like the last little detail, but we were all working together on stuff and person one did not have that much time to help us out with like video editing, animation and photography. And I also wanted them to help me start their own car meets and things like that, all that sort of thing, right? We never got around at their own car meets because of COVID, but from an outsider's perspective, he would look pretty lazy, you know, and there were times in my life where people could have, and they did, they have assumed that I was lazy when they didn't know my situation. They didn't know what I was going through. And, um, I wasn't going to do to this person what people have done to me. I, I, by this point, I'd learned like everybody has shit going on in their lives. So I'm not them. Who am I to judge them, right? I'm a little sick, actually. So, yeah, but... And then there's person two, okay? Um, and we're on a call together, all three of us. And there's one other person too. But person two goes like... 
he starts complaining. He's like, oh, why are you slacking off so much? You aren't taking this seriously. Look at my situation. I have an excuse for why I'm not able to have the same output in like the content that I make, right? How many YouTube videos and TikToks and that sort of thing I'm able to make. And he's telling him, like, person two does not know person one situation. He doesn't know that he's in like literally a worse situation, at the very least the same situation. And you know how person one responded when person two was like shitting on him basically? Person one goes, sorry dude, my bad, I've been slacking off. I've just been really lazy. I have no excuse, but I'll be sure to pick up the pace and, um, you know, make it, make it happen or get back to it or something like that. I forgot exactly what he said. And that to me is, if it's not stoicism, then that is at least something that I value, whatever the word for it is. And like, think about it for a second. Like a lot of people listening to this will probably be like simping over this dude. Just like how they, you know, simp over him in his own chat. Um, but th both these people are relatively popular on social media, by the way. Uh, person 2 especially. Person 2 has millions of followers. But think about, think about like, why? Just stop and think about for a second. What was so admirable about the words that he said? Like, he didn't have to say that. He could have easily been like, you don't know my situation. I'm doing the best I can. And he would have had every right to say that. But stoicism is not about saying what you have the right to say. It's about saying what you have the responsibility to say. Stoicism, to me, it, it means to bear the burden of your own responsibilities and the responsibilities of others. But wait, there's more. You also have to not complain while doing that. But wait, there's more. There's, I mean, a little more. I think it's not only, and this might be a habit that you have to get into, and this is not even a requirement. It's just my personal experience is telling me this. I think it's not enough that you don't complain. It's also, it also has to be that you can't force yourself to not complain. You can't feel like complaining and then not complain. Or maybe you can, um, but only in like, the situations, you should try to do that as little as possible. The majority of the time, as much as you possibly can, you should be so competent and strong to where you truly believe there is no need to complain because you don't even feel like it. And think about it, what it means when he says that. It means he doesn't care what people think of him since he knows himself so well. There's no insecurity. There's ultimate self-awareness. So many great qualities all wrapped in one. A lot of people always want to be like, oh, I don't care what people think of me. But really they do. And and like this right here, this is what that means. Like this is what it means to not care about what people think of you. Someone is saying something to you so blatantly wrong, yet it doesn't bother you. Like he's so strong that to him, correcting person two or letting him have that misconception, it doesn't matter either way. There's no difference to him because he's that strong. So why did he choose to let him have that misconception? Like why, why make that choice? Because it's the same amount of effort to say the words, right? Say both sets of words, the same amount of effort. So why did he make that choice? Because number one, it avoids an argument. You might as well defuse the situation if you're strong enough to tank it. What's more is bearing the burden of others. You see, person one understood person two situation. And because they understood the pain that he must have been going through, he was going through the same thing. So... He spared him from any more pain. And that's what it is. It's like, be strong and take the suffering that the world dishes out to you so others don't have to. So others can, you know, spread their suffering to you so they don't have to bear as much of it and you can handle it. And that's why we admire Batman so much because he let Gotham believe that he was the bad guy just so he can unite the city and stop all the fighting.
Remember when he said in the end of the Dark Knight, he was like, let them chase me because I can handle it. Not everyone can. I'm not the hero Gotham deserves, but I'm the hero Gotham needs. It's why he's the best superhero, straight up. Nobody else even comes close. Like he exemplifies stoicism in its purest form. And stoicism is a superhero quality. But in that Discord call, back to the Discord call. But wait, there's more. He also said, don't worry about it. I'll pick up the pace and do better. So that's really what it is. You have to, you can't just force yourself to not complain because that's nothing. That's just going, okay, 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 at everything. And that's just words. But it has to be honest. You have to truly, truly not care. Um, it has to come from a place of honesty. And to say that I'll, I'll, I'll like do better in my content and I'll, I'll you know, pick myself up and, and I'll, I'll take care of my weaknesses and speed up. Not only is he strong enough to bear the burden of himself and of others and not complain, but he's also trying to push himself to be even stronger than he already is. And that's what it means to have inner strength. Because there is, there is a strength of like your ability, your capacity to do things. And then there is a strength which is deeper than that, which is your acceleration of that strength. It's like... The inner, inner strength is like acceleration. Normal strength is like a scalar speed, right? And your inner strength, the more inner strength you have, the faster, the more rapidly your outer strength will accumulate. So he had enough outer strength, but he also had enough inner strength to where he said, I'm already this strong. I'm so much stronger than everyone that's around me. But guess what? I want to push myself to go even further. And that's, like, in his head, it's his responsibility to go like, oh, yeah, don't worry about me. Like, yeah, I'm in this situation, but it doesn't matter, you know. Life will always have a terrible situation to hand you, and I'll make it work anyways. If you let life stop you from doing what you want to do because of some unexpected tragedy, you'll never do what you want to do. The RNG suffering never ends. You do what you can despite that. And that's why what he said was so admirable. Because at first glance, it's actually kind of hard to pinpoint a reason. Like, after all, he could have gotten angry and, and been like, hey, I'm in the same situ situation as you. In fact, I'm even worse. Cut me some slack here. And that would have been totally fine. But being a stoic requires being more than just fine. You have to be exceptional. And in my, just from my own, the stuff I'm learning and going through and experiencing, you can't force it. Like I said, you have to truly believe that this is the right way of doing things. You can't get upset and force yourself to not complain. You have to get so strong mentally that you don't get upset in the first place. And then you won't even feel the need to complain then. So build your competence, become strong. That's how you achieve stoicism. And stoicism is a great virtue. You know, SJWs hate stoicism. Um, like, weak people hate Stoicism because the Stoic follows the archetype and, in my opinion, the one attribute of the archetype of a strong, if you wanted to go there, strong, straight man. Like, most storytellers would uh, divvy them out, but I would consider them the same thing in terms of a philosophy. And SJWs hate strength, and they hate heterosexuality, and they hate, like, men, you know. Um, but they love weak men and feminine men, but they hate masculinity. I think it's part of the core of masculinity is, is stoicism. And also, if you're a stoic, you, you, it means you can't complain about, like, you, you can't sweat the small stuff, you know. And... You have to be strong enough to fix situations, not complain about it and hope somebody else fixes it. That's like, that, and that's a part of life. You know, you can't be a stoic when you're a baby because it's, it's part of your nature. You're going to cry when you're hungry. You're going to cry when you're hurt. You're going to cry when you're sleepy. You're going to cry when whatever, you know, and because there's no other way to communicate that you have, that's all that you have. And eventually you get conditioned into... Um, okay, if you cry, then you get food or you get 
you know, mo mother's attention or whatever. And babies have to grow up from that and break free from that conditioning, at least to a certain extent. But uh, many people never do, and they grow up to be man-childs or just uh, adult infants, because this is prevalent across both males and females. Um, and and with, you know, education being predominantly female and uh, tech, or not like tech, but tech idea, like ideology being predominantly feminine and things like that, and social media being predominantly feminine, um, it leads to an imbalance where nowadays there's far more overprotective mothers than tyrannical fathers. So this imbalance has created like basically a world full of weakness, which is why stoicism is, is an even greater virtue because of how rare it is. I talk to females occasionally and not very often, actually. I probably should more to like actually speak about these kinds of things. But when I talk to them about like the things that they talk about when they complain about stuff, they tell me that like in conversation, in deeper conversation, they tell me that like when they when they're like ranting about something, they're not doing so to get a solution to the problem. They're just doing it just to do it. And they want a good listener. That's all they care about. They're talking about some stupid thing that happened at work. They're not telling me so that I go fix it. They just want me to hear it. And that's not stoic. In fact, that's the opposite. Stoics do things, they fix things, and they don't complain. The feminine instinct, the opposite of stoicism, complains and does nothing about it. Not to say that it's a bad thing. Um, again, I don't have any sort of hateful, I don't have a hateful bone in my body, um, but I'm just saying it like I see it. But um, people, and there's no need to be strong nowadays. Uh, it's, it's more of an internal desire. Many people want to stay weak, and in today's world, they can. There's nothing stopping them from doing that and, you know, living full lifespans where they go and see the world and do all this stuff, right? <laughs> but seeing people with the qualities of a Stoic will oftentimes, to people who have some of that, because we all have a bit of everything within us. We all have a bit of Stoic within us. We all have a bit of that feminine instinct within us as well, the unchecked one. Um, we all have a bit of everything. Because you have to have it. Um, from an evolutionary perspective, if if you don't have it, then you'd be screwed. People have to adapt to their situations. Um, if, you know, your spouse dies when you're raising your child, you have to take on the role of both mother and father, you know. So we all have these things within us. They just usually don't manifest unless there's uh, an imbalance. <laughs> but because there is that, you know, inner stoic that people have, that's like, man, I want to be strong. I want to be competent. I want to fix things. I want to do something and go out on an adventure or whatever. Because that exists within people, they see people who are actually stoic and they, they feel bad about their own lives because they feel like they're a failure. Because they hate looking in the mirror, you know? They'd only look in the mirror if, if, you know, they can cover their face in makeup, really. But then again, if you're a stoic, you won't let this affect you, you know? You won't even complain about the SJWs trying to cancel you. Like, you know, all these people, they're like, oh, people try to cancel me, people try to cancel me. And, and they're like crying and screaming, hey, don't cancel me. This is unfair. Why are you guys moving my platform? And then there's people like, you know, like the, there was that Andrew Tate clip of like, yeah, people canceled me twice now. I really don't care. Like, that's what a stoic would do. You can't even complain about these people. These people are, them complaining about you is, is their own problem that they have to fix. It's not something that you could fix. But on, on a more realistic level, I'm not trying to cater to everyone, right? Incomp incompetence is a sin. You can't take stoicism lightly, okay? Because an incompetent person with good intentions will give you the same result as a competent person with bad intentions. Like, think about that for a second. If I'm really good at being evil and someone is really bad at being good, we're the same. 
Stoicism is actually a virtue. It's and 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 that's that's a slippery slope to go down to say that kind of thing. Because then someone might ask, okay, is the feminine instinct not a virtue? And there's virtue and beauty across the board. But in the world we live in today, there is more virtue in being a Stoic than not. And many people are really drawn to this, this lifestyle, this Stoic lifestyle, because they have an intuitive understanding that this is a possible piece to the antidote uh, to the suffering of their life. Not only that it'll improve your life, but it'll also improve the lives of people around you. It's pure, well, actually, it's, it's selfishness, if you think about it. I was about to say selflessness, but Stoicism is like selfishness 2.0. But that's a topic for another day. I just felt like telling this little story. But a lot of people have uh, a lot of people have misconceptions about, you know, what being a Stoic truly is. Like my brother, when he was like 25, still didn't even know what it meant. He thought that it meant showing no emotion. Like, he thought like laughing or crying or smiling or whatever. He's like, oh, that's not Stoicism, you know? No, dude, that's being human. Like, cry and laugh and frown and smile and show emotion. But be able to control your emotions, not for yourself, but for others. When people are in a room and they're crying and you know that crying will just make it worse, and you need to be the strongest person in the room, you be the strongest person in the room. But when you leave the room and when you're alone, yeah, cry your eyes out, you know? But don't ever share that with anyone. Maybe share it with someone if you know it'll benefit them, but don't do things, I mean, this goes back to other kinds of virtues though. But you have to have a, a substantial amount of control over your emotions. That doesn't mean you don't show any emotion, though. It doesn't mean you be a psychopath. You have to, essentially, if you, you know, people say, talk about the roller coaster of emotions, like life is a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, if you're a stoic, it means you're not going to go, like, I don't want to ride the roller coaster. It means you will gladly ride the roller coaster. Go through whatever it entails, whatever, you know, oh, uh, if I get whiplash or if I feel like, you know, I lost my stomach in the air or whatever on the loop-de-loop -loop if it's uncomfortable. No, you go on the roller coaster and you don't complain. You just look at the positive of it. And when someone else around you is screaming and they're scared, you hold on to them, no matter how scared you are, you know? That's what it means to be stoic. It means to take on the emotional roller coaster. It's not exactly, my definition here is not at all what philosophers agreed upon that, that it is, but it's actually pretty close. And in, in, what I'm trying to describe is kind of difficult to put into words, but it's like a you know it when you see it type thing. <laughs> but uh, if that's not the definition of something valuable, I don't know what is. So so whatever it is, whatever I just described, that's like, I strive to be like that. Words are fickle, you know? I think it's more accurate to say it's Sisu. Uh, and it's a Finnish word that like, I think, I think Sisu is exactly this, the thing that, like exactly what I just described. <laughs> Um, but it's hard to say exactly. I don't speak Finnish, you know, so I'm going to stick with calling it Stoicism. And if you want to, like, note when you see it, you want some examples, right? Because it's, it's much easier to learn from stories than it is to learn from, like, just someone talking. There's, you know, Iron Man from, like, and Iron Man is just based off of the story of Jesus. So there's Jesus, right? But no one cares about those stories. But everyone loves Iron Man. And there's also like Superman from the comics, but um, not in the movies. There is uh, Soichiro Yagami from Death Note. I was just checking clips from that. There's Uncle Iroh from Avatar Last Airbender. Uh, there's a fucking... 
actually, I haven't seen Lion King in a while. I'll get back to you on that. But there's also like, also Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank. Say what you want about him as like a, as like a, whether or not he's like a moral person or whatever. And like the things he's done for business and what he actually like values in the world. And if he actually cares about other people other than himself and stuff like that. And the scams he's done and FTX. and I can go on and on, but at least on the show, at least earlier on, right? I don't know. I haven't watched it in a long time. Biggest deal I ever saw on Shark Tank was that $1 million like sushi restaurant deal. And I know all the deals nowadays are like $5 million, $10 million deals. So it's been a little while. But he was a really controversial guy even back then. People might not remember it. But even back then, like, he he would take all their shit. Like, think about it. He takes regularly scheduled humiliation and deals with it just for the character and for the audience and the entertainment now it's becoming more clear that it was not actually like him it was it was him just being you know cunning and charismatic and trying to outplay people and trying to fool people into thinking that he's stoic but really it does get to him and he does care about his image a lot um but back then and that he may actually truly be the villain but back then, it, it seemed like for, at least he was doing it for the entertainment. Like, he did not care whether the general normie audience hates him or they root against him. And because of that, he was actually the glue that held that whole show together. Like, if, you, if you're if you a smart cookie, you'd have realized that, like, without Mr. Wonderful, that show would not still be airing. Um, also, like, police officers. That is a controversial one uh, because a lot of people hate the police and you know what? I hate a lot of police officers too. Vast majority of them. But, um, and the police are in a weird situation. I wouldn't say police officers are, I wouldn't say police officers are stoics. I would say the concept, the concept of it is stoic. It's not stoic in application though. Uh... Okay, I'm about to leave in like an hour. Um, one sec. Okay, cool. Yeah. But yeah, the application of... Uh, like, for example... Um, police will get really, really up in arms at the things that you say to them. Even though the things that you say to them should not matter to them. They should be able to take it and handle it. Like, um, if someone... Getting out of a ticket usually involves being nice to the police officer. And people pissing off police officers will usually, like, push them to, like, be really harsh with you. They'll not only arrest you, but they'll, like, throw you around. And they'll tighten the handcuffs as, as tight as possible. And they'll, they'll do all that stuff. So, in practice, they're not stoics. But in concept, they are. <laughs> And that's the thing, police can't, they're, they're of such high demand among feminine Western society where men are not masculine. And it's like, this is the solution. If you don't want a corrupt police force, encourage masculinity, encourage people to hold each other accountable, encourage there to be this constant um, idea of like, hey, if you do something wrong, there's a threat of violence. Like, um... If you, um, you know, were to molest my daughter, the police are not coming after you to put you in jail and, and have due process and, you know, go through all of that, like, they're not going to enter your property without probable cause. No, dude, I am coming to your property and burning it down until you come out and I'm stabbing you repeatedly, not shooting you because that's too quick. I will stab you so I can savor the moment. And... If you have truly masculine men all holding each other accountable, wielding the constant threat of extreme violence against each other to make sure that people do the right thing, you won't even need a police force. So there's no need to like train people or whatever. It'll just happen naturally. Um, because pol police officers, you can be a mediocre person and become a police officer. That's what's bad about it. And to be a stoic, to take on that responsibility... Because with great power comes great responsibility. You take on the responsibility. 
You can't be mediocre or even good or even great. You have to be exceptional. And like, uh, uh, for example, when, um, when those riots were happening, police riots and the police officers, or not the police, yeah, the police, like the anti-police riots or whatever. And uh, it was like that one, um, that place in like Seattle or something like that, that had like the lawless zone or whatever where police would not go to. Um, and then police, like the, the officers of the area were like, yeah, no, we're not responding to calls. Oh, we're going to go on a protest. Like, or not a protest. They're like, we're going on strike. Police officers went on strike. Do you guys remember that? I don't know if you guys remember. They, they were like, oh, yeah, if people call 911, we're not responding. Dispatch wants to send us out. We're not, we're not going. And that's so, that's so fucked up to, to all in huge numbers, like call in sick and just not respond. Stop showing up out of like protest like that's not being a true stoic that's babies throwing temper tantrums at other babies throwing temper tantrums and if you were truly stoic you would not care about what the other person party does whatever you would have a unilateral agreement it's not contingent on whatever they do they could hate me love me whatever but i will be there for them and i will protect them and that's what it means to be stoic it, they you you go out there and you protect their right to hate you that's what it means to be stoic. And these police officers were not doing that. So clearly there's something wrong. Clearly the system has, has failed in at least one way. You know, let's be upfront here, by the way. I don't want to get political, but it's probably going to get political. Um, society, quote unquote, right? Uh, Twitter is not representative of society, but it is representative of uh, the mainstream media, at least, or a huge chunk of it, a substantial amount of it. And they made it crystal clear that it doesn't matter what the police does. They're wrong in everything, right? According to them. Like, oh, you're abandoning your job of protecting the citizens? Canceled. Oh, you're coming back to work so that you can go on a power trip and oppress people? Canceled. And because of that pressure put on the police... You can give in and do something stupid for a stupid reason, or you can say, I don't care if they're, they think I'm some, if they say I'm a racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, Nazi, white supremacist, every word that they could think of, right? Doesn't matter. I'll still get up, put on my uniform and protect them because that's my responsibility, protect and serve. And it isn't swayed by what they think. They think I'm good or not. I know I'm good for them and what they think of me does not play a factor in it. If anything, I'm defending the right to hate me, and I will defend that with my life. That's the mindset of a good police officer. And there, there's an argument here on both sides. Um, police killings are nowhere near as common as people make them out to be. But there's also an attitude, and there's also literal, like, for example, civil civil forfeiture, or, you know, arresting people on their own front yards or in their own driveways for doing burnouts on their own property and things like that. Or like what they got in California. Uh, you can't have too loud of an exhaust, otherwise you'll get fined and stuff like that, you know? Um, but there's, there's an argument that goes both ways. Many, many arguments actually. And that's the political side of things. And I'm not interested in going down the rabbit hole of statistics and all this bullshit. All I care about is philosophy and stories. But, um, and you know what, that's not even, ignore the example about police, but an, another example of a stoic is Snape from Harry Potter. Everyone knows that one, right? He pretended to be the bad guy, and in the end, he was actually the best boy of the whole damn franchise. Um, also, Colby Covington in the UFC. Again, I think these people who are, like, not super strong-willed and strong-minded... <laughs> They go down that rabbit hole and it truly does change them. But at least in the beginning, Colby Covington was, was, he was doing what he was doing for entertainment. And he wasn't actually like, you know, a, a raging, like, you know, deceptive person. <laughs> and 
and after a while, it, you know, that kind of thing comes at diminishing returns, but, um, and he doesn't need to do it anymore. He's, he's big now, but he still does it. And, oh, uh, Marcus Aurelius, he's obviously, he's the Stoic. If there was ever to be one, he would be the one. It's him, you know? You can read meditations, but, you know, I can't read like that. I'm borderline illiterate, so I don't even know much about him, honestly. Last great emperor of Rome, um, and instead of acting like an emperor, he acted like a citizen. That's really all you need to know. <laughs> but if you want to look at it from like a philosopher's perspective or a historian's perspective, Marcus Aurelius is the quintessential Stoic of mankind. I'm not even a philosopher or a historian. I'm a storyteller. So for me, the quintessential uh, Stoic is actually Batman. And it probably always will be. Um, and uh, I guess, you know, Ferb from Phineas and Ferb. Sure, why not? And, you know, we'll throw Zorro in there from One Piece. God damn, dude, Zorro. He's... Like, Zoro, like, if he tells you that he'll make sure nobody takes your money and someone grabs a penny off your desk, Zoro will, like, nuke the planet just to protect your money and, like, make sure he protects his word. He's a perfect example of this. And he's, like, the anime example. So everything goes extremely overboard, you know, in, like, the whole anime world, but... I think um, my dad, you know, here and there, was also a pretty decent example. He's the one who set the example for me. Didn't have, like, a singular Discord story about him. I'd have to talk about, like, many, many things in his whole life. I'm not stoic, though. Um, I try to be. But I still do care about what people think of me, whether I like to admit it or not. And it's something I have to work on. <laughs> and there's also... Okay, this would also help. There's a few people that are not Stoics, right? Like that you can very clearly tell, like this person is not. Um, and, and that might also, if you want to be Stoic, it might also help you to like go in a direction of like, okay, yeah, this is what I can avoid. Not only do I have something to chase, I have something to avoid as well. And so these, these are the people that I could think of off the top of my head who are the opposite of Stoic. Number one, feminists. There's also like, you know, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Barack Obama, every president I can remember, really. If they sent drone strikes after people, after like, and, and they have like a giant KD ratio of innocent civilian casualties from drone strikes uh, without ever like going there and, and dealing with the situation themselves, but just mindlessly psychopathic behavior, abusing their power, then they're Stoics. <laughs> it's, it's something that they should learn from Marcus Aurelius about. But um, maybe it's different because, you know, Marcus Aurelius only had the power of a human being. These presidents have the powers of gods. But also Boogie2988, uh, especially later on. Um, or Deji for like that whole like three years where he had that public beef with him and KSI. <laughs> Deji was a good example on how to not be a stoic. KSI was mediocre. He, he, I, I think, I think even he would admit that, like, he did not handle the situation as good as he could have, right? Um, oh, also, you guys remember... But it's not like Kesai did anything wrong in the situation. But he didn't do things exceptionally. I think he even he would realize that, looking back on it. Um, but you guys know that that girl who was, like, a... She'd watch anime on YouTube and then like literally violate copyright law and then she partnered with YouTube to copy strike all the YouTubers who criticized her. Uh shit, what was her name? What was her name? What was her name? Let me Susie Lou, Susie Lou, that was her. She's a good example of how to, of how to be the opposite of a stoic. <laughs> Funnily enough, I would also say um PewDiePie is a great example of how to be a stoic. I, I might mix them up because I'm still remembering people, but <laughs> PewDiePie is a stoic person, at least sometimes, right? He he does things that are like, okay, wow, like that's uh 
it's very difficult to stay humble and grounded the way he has in his kind of situation. But he's too, he's a humble stoke and he'd never admit it. He's too modest for that. And he'll never see this, but if he were to ever see something like this, he still wouldn't admit it. It's cool though. I got him. I'll, I'll say it for him, you know, but, and that's the thing. It's like he, he, he'll push himself to have like these tremendously admirable qualities and if he didn't do it, it would be violating that principle and he wouldn't be a stoke. So it's not up for him to decide, but I'm going to decide for him. Felix, if you ever watch this in the future, you are a stoic. You are like, you do have these truly admirable qualities, at least from what I can tell from my limited understanding of you. I've never met you or anything, you know, but we all know it. Uh, Joe Rogan is also a good example of a stoic. I forgot to mention him. Uh, obviously, also all the religious deities... Jesus, Abraham, Buddha, Muhammad, whether they existed or not even, doesn't really matter. But like, basically, all like the, the stories people had to say about them, whether the stories are even true or not, they still resonate for a reason. Um, remove the religion aspect out of it. I mean, like, take, Confucianism isn't even, it's hardly a, a religion, it's more of a lifestyle. Like you can, you can be Catholic and Confucianist at the same time, if you wanted to, and there'd be no issues. <laughs> also, okay, I was talking about people who aren't Stoics. Like okay, Confucius is a Stoic. Like uh, this is a little tangent. I just remembered those. But some more example of people who are not Stoics <laughs> is the the nurses and doctors from that one movie. Um, one flew over the cuckoo's nest, you know, or Kylo Ren, you know, kind of not stoic or, uh, early Loki from Thor. Like he was the biggest fucking crybaby, you know? I mean, most of those characters were really poorly written and boring, <laughs> at least at the time, but still like his whole character journey is about kind of like getting over that, you know, accepting that he's adopted and shit like that, which sucks. But like, that's no reason to commit mass genocide, which he does in the Avengers, or at least tries, at least, you know. Also, uh, I'm glad I have such a few viewers. Um, Twitch staff in general have no stoicism in the slightest. That one's blatantly obvious. I mean, I didn't even need to mention that. You guys already all knew that. So... How do you become stoic? Let's just get, let's get right to it, right? It's simple. If you think hard enough, first of all, if you think hard enough, you get to the, your own answer, your own personal answer. There isn't a catch-all answer that applies to everyone that I could put into words. But if you want specifics for the people that this applies to, let's say you get bad grades and your parents are upset every time they see your report card. <laughs> If this applies to you, get good grades. Not because you want it, but because your parents want it. And you're strong enough to get good grades and still do everything else you want to do in your life. <laughs> if you see someone sitting alone at lunch, go sit with them. Don't worry about what people think of you. Who cares? Get up early once a week on like Sundays or something and cook a meal for your parents so they can relax. I used to do that. Different meal every time. It was like... <laughs> different kinds of pastas and uh like this like really complicated japanese style ramen and this like sweet potato and milk dessert that they have in india that my dad really likes um and also when you do these things you don't get to complain you don't get to you know say to your mom like i woke up so early so you know i made food for you guys i don't want to go to church or whatever i'm really tired you know Mm -mm, no, 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 you don't get to be weak. It's it's not about, you know, doing some great things and continuing to, like, live the life at the same level of lifestyle that you have, where you, you, like, cut back on doing other things that you're doing. Like, waking up early and then being tired all day. No. It's about getting stronger every day. Um, you do everything that you're doing, plus more. You do 1% more every single day than you did the previous day. <laughs> if you don't know how to cook... That's not an excuse. Figure it out. Watch YouTube videos. If someone throws trash on the ground and litters, pick it up. And you don't need to go to them and scold them for littering. 
Actually, you shouldn't. Um, we, we, we appreciate the people who will, you know, go out of their way to like do the right thing. But when people complain to other people and go like, how come you're also not doing the right thing? Those people are not cool. <laughs> and Stoicism is first and foremost, cool. Like that's why it's selfishness 2.0 because that's, that's what it is. That's what it leads to. But I mean, if, if you know, that person who threw the trash on the ground, you pick it up, if they see you picking it up, let them see the consequences of their own actions, you know? And if they don't learn, oh, well, people like that always end up miserable. You're not responsible for their actions. And you could be responsible, you know, you could, mm, th th this, <sighs> the word responsible is tough. Because the word responsible, res responsible implies a bilateral agreement. That like, they will make you feel a certain way and you will do a certain thing for them. But I guess in a way you do have to kind of suppress your emotions. You do have to kind of be a bit unfeeling when people of your responsibility do not uh, abide by what you want them to do. And then you have to be competent enough to fix it yourself, you know? To do the things yourself and to make sure you make it happen. But responsible is a tricky word. I'm just now realizing the depth of that word and how it could probably be split up into multiple words. But I would say obligation is a, is a, is a good word to use. Like you, like they have no obligation to do the right thing, but you have an obligation to do the right thing. And you have an obligation to do the right thing on behalf of them, but you don't have an obligation to make them do the right thing. And if you're a true stoic, you don't just do the right thing. You go above and beyond. You do more than the right thing. You do so much right that it cancels out the wrong that others are doing. And you don't be discouraged when it doesn't cancel out. But sto like stoicism is selfishness. You aren't picking up litter because it helps the environment. Um, because every for every one piece of litter you pick up, a hundred new pieces will be dropped down. You do it because it gives you personal fulfillment and meaning. <laughs> you do it because there's a responsibility that you set for yourself to help the environment. And it's about the journey, not the destination. You don't care if the environment's fixed or not. You could care, but that's unrelated to what you're going to do. Um, because it's not like you're going to be able to change that. It's not like you can go against 8 billion people's collective will. You know, If they want to destroy the environment, there's nothing you could do to fix it. So... You help the environment not for the destination of helping the environment, but for the journey of the feel-good of helping the environment. Ultimately, it's that responsibility that does it, the feel-good of that responsibility. And no other reason needs to suffice. That reason needs to be strong enough for you to be able to do it. And so many people go into this kind of thing for the wrong reason. They pick up litter and, you know, they pick every piece up that they possibly can. And then they go the next day and 10 times as many pieces of trash are on the ground. <laughs> And then they feel like they aren't making an impact and they get discouraged. And then they stop because they try to get their motivation from other places, like fixing the environment. But you don't get your motivation from the environment. You get your motivation from the selfishness, from the feel good of it. You don't get discouraged because your goal is not to clean up the world. Your goal is to clean up your own act. <laughs> so even if you do so much right and it doesn't cancel the wrongs of others, don't stop, you know, because... But that's, that's only if you've chosen to uh, have a responsibility towards nature like that. And I choose to have the responsibility. Nature has given me so much, uh, so I'm going to give back to it. I was literally just in the car two days ago with this, like, two girls and two other guys. And this girl was like, oh, uh, I just trash. What do I do? Throw it out the window, whatever. And I'm like, here, give it to me. And I just put it in my pocket and I threw it away later. <laughs> And they, I could see it on their faces. They thought that was really cool because they're like, damn, bro, that's good shit. I would not do that. And I could tell that like next time they're around me, bro, they're not going to litter. They're not going to litter because they want my admiration and that feels good. And that's a selfish desire of me to have that, you know? <laughs> so I'm doing it for myself. And that, that's the responsibility that I've chosen to have. You know, you pick your battles. You pick who you want to be responsible to and what you want to be responsible to. Like family, that's a good one, you know? That's probably the first one that most people will pick. 
And in my opinion, all of us have a responsibility towards the earth and the environment uh, to be one with nature, right? Like, to not... Uh, not saying going around like oh paper straws all this shit that's like so disconnected and so corporate right using recycle bins when you don't even know where it goes you want to do something right you got to do it yourself right who knows where that where the recycling thing actually goes to i'm saying be one with nature go step outside and touch grass and and feel the sun and and be a part of nature and, and be a part of the life cycle you know eat foods that are from nature not from a factory you know uh, uh, if you're going to eat meat, if you have the, if you're affluent and you have the ability to do so, you have the wealth to do so, hey, get good quality meat from good quality places and don't buy this like factory, like, you know, synthetic synthesized, like impossible burger that like doesn't even make any sense. And it's just some like chemical concoction, you know, but that's just like my personal, it's something that I never like tell anybody in person. I'll say it on stream, but I never, you know, if somebody else litters, I might think of them a certain way, but I don't, um, and you can like litter like a banana peel or whatever, because that's all part of nature. Um, it's biodegradable. You know, what goes into nature goes back out of nature. If if you, you, you're you eating something from nature, the waste product, the trash of that can go right back into nature. They're called seeds and they continue nature's growth, you know? And so... Um, People who, like, chew earth resources and spit it out, like, I may think of them a certain of, a, of them a certain way, but I'll never say it to them. Because, you know, I mean, the easiest way to say it is, like, to each their own, you know? And to me, that goes against the whole spirit of, like, if I'm responsible for this, I don't even know if they're, like, real people. They could be NPCs, you know? Who knows if they actually even have free will. But I know what I have to do. So I, the only person I'm responsible for truly is myself. <sighs> and that's why, like, I want to I wanna hunt later on, you know, not now, but later on, I want to go hunting. I want to, um, <sighs> I want to, like, every, every animal that I've eaten or am willing to eat, which is all of them, I want to be comfortable with having that animal's blood on my hands. <sighs> Um, otherwise I don't deserve to eat it, but that's just like my, my personal, I claim that responsibility for myself towards nature and to the earth, you know, that gave me this life and the, the environment that makes this life so fun. I owe it to them to, to, to treat them as much as I can. <laughs> and if you feel a responsibility similar to that or that one or some like something else that's analogous, you can't have that. There's the attitude of like, oh, well, it's not my problem. I won't do it. You know, that, that that attitude never flies. You go, not my problem, but I'll do it anyways. And it, it, this is actually crazy. I, it's crazy how it relates back to this. this is, I swear to God, this is not planned. But, oh man, this totally sounds like I planned it. I wish I did though. But one of the most admirable people I've ever met in my entire life... <laughs> She used to go with me on roller coasters and Ferris wheels and stuff to help me get over my fear of heights. It didn't work. I'm still afraid of heights. It might have worked a little bit. When I was with her, it worked. When I was with her, I wasn't afraid. Um, that sounds like some pussy shit, bro. I was a little kid at the time. But I found out later, like a year later, actually, she was also afraid of heights. She didn't tell me. And I'm like, damn, that's the same. That's inner strength. She had way more inner strength than I had. Uh, and that's why I would like, I would trust her with my life. That's how you do it. That's a stoic right there. That's, that's, that's like a stoic is. Hold up. I just got another text. Okay. Hold up. Yeah. So a stoic, a stoic is when Batman was told by the commissioner, like, oh, I never got to thank you. And he responds with. And you'll never have to, because if you, if you choose a responsibility and it's to express kindness, right? For no reason other than it's the right thing to do. There's no, uh, condition. 
there's no, I'm going to be kind if they're kind to me. I'm going to be kind if they don't treat me like, no. You be kind regardless of what people do. Regardless of whether they feel the need to thank you or not or any of that stuff, right? Being a stoic is, you know, if someone dies in the gym with the bar on them because they didn't have a spotter, you go and you add some more plates on there before the coroner shows up. Out of no benefit to yourself. In fact, it's it's heavy to put those plates on there. But just to honor a fallen soldier, forget about, you know, putting others down to lift yourself up. Lift yourself so high that you can pull others up to you and you would be no worse for wear. Bear the burden of your own responsibility and be so strong that you can do that and you can bear the responsibility of others and not complain and not because you try hard to not complain, but because you're so damn strong that you don't even feel like complaining. <laughs> and and not because you try hard to not complain, like you hear my advice and, and you want to complain, but you hold back. No, you don't complain because you're so strong and competent that you don't even feel the urge to complain to begin with. And if you aren't strong enough to reach that, then simply put, get good, get stronger. Treat life like an anime is what I'm trying to say. Become Naruto. That's the moral of the story, actually. Like, you want to summarize lesson of, of every piece of wisdom I can offer, actually? Treat life like you're the anime protagonist. Um, well, uh, it, for like Naruto, not like fucking, you know, redo of healer or something like that. That would be bad. But yeah, thank you for coming to my TED talk. Fucking TED, dude. Who the fuck is Ted anyways? That dude, Ted, better be the fucking wisest philosopher of all time if his name is going to be used like this. Let me fucking that shit up. Oh. Technology, entertainment, and design. Ah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, how do you achieve... Stoicism, serious note, just to sum it all up, right? Step one, you have to be strong. You have to be competent. You have to be powerful enough to not let the world around you bring you down no matter what it does. There's a quote by Diogenes. I know, back to Diogenes. Um, and it's, the sun still shines in cesspools and yet isn't polluted by them. Be the sun. Shine everywhere. Give light and be so damn powerful that you can afford to shine in even the most polluted places, unbiased, without discrimination, because you're so powerful. And no matter how much you shine in the polluted cesspools of the world, it will never pollute you because you're just that powerful. So that's step one. Become powerful. You know, get rich. You have to do all these things. I know it's this is the most difficult step, but you got to get rich. You got to be at least a millionaire, you know, at least. I don't know when you might be watching this, but... You know, if you're watching this like 20 years from now, maybe that's not not even enough. But you have to generating like at least, I would say, as of 2023, at least like $20,000, $25,000 a month in income. And, and you know what? That's passive. You got to do that passively. You want to do it actively. You got to generate at least $100,000, $150,000 in income if you're going to, you know, work eight hours a day. But um, that's like step one, you know, become powerful, become skilled, have a bunch of skills, be a people person, be able to talk really well, be able to be in your own mind and not be bored. Uh, you have to be able to break addictions. You can't be uh, jerking off, watching porn. You can't be addicted to any drugs. You can't be addicted to any sugar. You have to be healthy. You have to be fit. You have to be capable of, you know, you have to be in the, like, be able to bench press your entire body weight, be able to squat one and a half times your body weight, be able to deadlift two times your body weight, but probably don't do that because I, I don't think deadlifts is actually a, like a all that useful of a workout, honestly. But, um, and it's not even that difficult to do the last one, do deadlift. It's not even difficult to do two times your body weight, but um, at least when you're young, you know. But yeah, that's that's step one. Become powerful, become strong, become competent. And step two, well... You already know, like you're thinking of some things in your head. If you're listening to this right now, you're already thinking of things and you know what's right. So 
do what you know is right and do what you can and do your best. And best believe that your best, believe it or not, is actually good enough. You'd be surprised what your best is actually capable of. So yeah. Damn, I should be a fucking speaker or some shit. That was good. I always sound so smart even when I'm bullshitting. But watch, I'm going to play this back and I'm going to sound like a fucking dumbass. Not to you guys, maybe. Maybe to you guys, but... Like, if I watch this again in a week, I'm going to be able to point out so many things that that I said that I could have said better. Or maybe I should have just recorded this when I was not sick. Oh, also, I should mention this. Be wary on the path to stoicism. People often get become very proud of what they're able to do, especially in the path of acquiring skills, gaining XP. <laughs> and that usually leads to a lot of arrogance. That's, if you go down the path of arrogance, it's something you'll regret. Watch out for that. If you have the bone in your body that wants to be stoic, eventually a day will come where you're so powerful, yet so arrogant, where you realize you went down the wrong path and you'll want to go back and, and do it right the first time. So, Make sure you do it right the first time, okay? Pay attention to your behavior. The moment you feel yourself starting to talk back to people going like, I'm better at this than you. I'm I'm more competent than you. I understand this field better than you. I'm a better people person than you. I Like, the moment you start feeling like you're going to talk back to people, don't. Hold back and train yourself to stay grounded. <laughs> it happens to everyone. Um, and don't tell anyone that you've become better. That's also part of it. Don't get that feedback from people because then it's a lie that you have to keep up. <laughs> In fact, don't even show them you're better. The idea of like, show, don't tell. No, don't even, don't even show them. Just be better for its own sake. That's it. That's all you got to do. So it's, it's fairly simple. If you're, if you have like the, I don't know, it's cringe to say, but if you have the masculine energy, um, then this whole thing was useless because you already know intuitively what you got to do. So, yeah, that's stoicism. <laughs>